How's it going, everyone? Everyone's favourite bad boy senator, the man himself, Fraser Anning, has made a splash in the news today on Friday the 26th of April. I'll probably publish this video tomorrow, I would imagine, but I thought I'd go over just a couple of the headlines and a bit of the news updates just to show everyone what's happening in the world of Senator Fraser Anning. If you haven't already, please subscribe to Matty Rose Live and tune in to my weekly live stream with editor of the XYZ, David Hiscox, where we discuss all the biggest news of the week. We go live every Monday at about 9.15 Australian Eastern Time. Can't wait to see you there. Link in the description. Fraser Anning's Conservative National Party has entered the federal election race with a supporter of far-right action group United Patriots, a convicted criminal and an ineligible bankrupt ex-counsellor among his candidates. So notice they announce Fraser Anning's election campaign with, look at these three bad people who are going for election under Fraser Anning. Ooh, bad people, character attack, slime attack. No discussion of the policies, just ad hominem, essentially. We'll go through each of the candidates that they're talking about and you'll see that... It's really a nothing burger, essentially, but we'll continue for now. Senator Anning, who entered Parliament after receiving just 19 votes in late 2017, is running his new party on a far-right anti-immigration platform. What the story conveniently leaves out is that there were two people in the Senate who actually got in on it. Zero primary votes. Doesn't matter whether you win by a million votes or by one vote. You just need to win. And... As expected from the mainstream media, they use the term far-right with anti-immigration. I guess if you're not far-right, that means you're pro-mass immigration, so you're pro the destruction of the West. Therefore, I guess you're just far-wrong. <laughs> Senator Anning, who was globally condemned after blaming Muslim immigration for a white supremacist deadly attack on a Christchurch mosque last month, will contest the election on a platform of fighting against immigration, relaxing Australia's gun restrictions, and creating a not-for-profit government bank. This is actually a very interesting sentence that they've put here. Let's just have a look at the first part of it. He was globally condemned. What they actually mean here is that there were people around the world who didn't like what he had to say. What they call it is globally condemned. However, there were just as many, if not more people around the world saying that he was doing a great job. Maybe not in the mainstream, maybe just on the internet or outside the mainstream where these fools aren't paying attention. But where they say he was globally condemned, a normal person could just say he was globally lauded for being a hero and telling the truth, which is also the truth, he was globally lauded, just as he was globally condemned by the establishment who are anti-West and anti-white. Also, they say he blamed Muslim immigration for a white supremacist's deadly attack. He didn't blame Muslim immigration for that attack specifically. He pointed out the fact that it wouldn't have happened if there was no mass immigration and no Muslim immigration. Also, the man who carried out the attack wasn't actually a white supremacist. He stated very clearly in his manifesto that he wasn't a white supremacist, yet they call him that in this article because it's part of their narrative. And notice how they contrast the start of that sentence with the second start, which is his actual platform. He's fighting against immigration. He wants to relax Australia's gun restrictions and create a not-for-profit government bank. The tactic here is to conflate the Christchurch shooting and m blaming m Muslims. He, he wants to conflate them with the perfectly legitimate stance of protecting Australian people and our country from an invasive migration program, giving Australians back our right to self-defense and creating a bank that actually runs for the people. They want to try and conflate those two. So in the mind of the NPC reader, I say NPC because most people are smart enough to spot this absolute BS. But in the mind of the NPC reader, they're going to think, oh, go relaxing gun control and fighting against immigration is the same as white supremacy. Ah! 
that's the whole point there. It's a very obvious propaganda technique. Mainstream media does it all the time. There's a reason nobody trusts them anymore if they have an IQ over 90. The party's constitution, seen by news.com.au. That's funny. Seen by them, it's on the internet. Everyone can see it. Lays out a vision for Australia as an English-speaking, predominantly European Christian Commonwealth as originally described in 1901 when Australia as a nation was founded. It also calls for an immigration program that gives preference to those best able to integrate and assimilate, opposes same-sex marriage, and supports freedom of speech and the loosening of gun laws and moving away from international treaties. I see no issue with that. Australia was founded as a European nation. It's actually the reason we have a nation in the first place, the reason the states came together and wrote the Constitution. Henry Parks... Edmund Barton, all these fine, upstanding gentlemen who founded our great nation were all very clear on the matter. They wanted Australia to remain a homogenous white nation. It's a whole reason we have a constitution and the fact that our government took that away from us, that is our birthright, without asking our permission first, is probably one of the greatest acts of betrayal in the history of our country. In fact, I would argue it is the greatest act of betrayal in the history of our country. They really should be ashamed and the media should be ashamed for allowing it to happen and not doing their job. But this is where I come in. The party also appears to believe in the Great Replacement, a conspiracy theory prevalent among far-right nationalists that the white Christian European population is gradually being replaced by African and Middle Eastern populations through mass migration. So there, the mainstream media repeats the lie that highlighting the fact that whites are being replaced in our own countries is a conspiracy theory. It's not a conspiracy theory. That is flat out anti-white pro-genocide gaslighting. It is horrendous that they would use that term there. It's Genuinely disgusting. It is a fact that white nations, white Christian European nations, including America, like United States, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, all these countries are having non-white Christians flooded into our nations. The people coming in have much higher birth rates than the white Christian European people who we're already here and whose ancestors actually built the nations. This is flat out ethnic replacement. In other words, multiculturalism is genocide. The fact that they call it a conspiracy theory there is absolutely arrogant and galling beyond belief. The mainstream media and the establishment have spent decades telling us, white people, that we were going to become minorities in our own countries and that this was inevitable and a good thing. And now, when us people of white European ancestry say, no, you can't do that, we don't want you to do that, we will fight against it, all of a sudden it's a conspiracy theory. Isn't that just horrendous? Again, this is why nobody trusts the mainstream media and why you just shouldn't get your news from the mainstream media unless it's to make content for YouTube videos and independent articles. Brenton Tarrant, the perpetrator of the Christchurch attacks, appeared to have been heavily influenced by this theory before opening fire on two mosques, killing 50 unarmed worshippers. He made similar arguments in his 74-page document he released ahead of his attacks, which was also entitled The Great Replacement. So what they're trying to do there is conflate anyone who points out the facts that I just told you about white ethnic replacement with the guy who shot up the mosque. Essentially saying that, well, he believed it and he did a bad thing, therefore anyone who believes it is also essentially supporting this somehow. This is what they're trying to do. Oh, look, look, they both believe it, therefore they're both bad people. I'm sure Brenton Tarrant believed that the earth was round. He also drove cars. Does that mean anyone who believes that the earth is round and drives cars also thinks that it's okay to do what he did? No, of course not. But this is how the mainstream media operate in the current year. So this is one of the candidates that Fraser Anning has announced. 
Senator Anning's lead candidate in the ACT is Shane Van Duren, a veteran with a criminal history that includes assaulting a police officer and choking an RSPCA inspector. Mr Van Duren, 44, was charged in 2017 after a physical altercation in which police and animal inspectors attempted to collect his dog from his house. The dog had been given to Mr Van Duren to help with his post-traumatic stress disorder, but was handed to the RSPCA after it was found to be a stray. In December 2015, Mr. Van Duren broke into the RSPCA's Western Headquarters to get the dog back. When the two police officers and two RSP RSPCA inspectors went to his house to retrieve the animal, he punched one of the police officers and strangled an RSPCA inspector. Speaking about the incident earlier this week, Mr. Van Duren said the case wasn't relevant to his Senate run, telling the Canberra Times he was only charged with assault because there's no self-defence for police brutality. And he said, and I quote, if no one in the Senate brings a malicious case and steals my jog in front of my children, I probably won't choke anybody there. End quote. <laughs> this to me looks like the media are just picking on a guy who served his country dutifully, was obviously very much mentally affected by it. He got PTSD. And then maybe he left the gate open on his house. He lost his dog. He went to go and get it. And police came and tried to steal his dog from him. If anything, I feel like he's probably the victim here. Sure, it's not right to p punch a police officer. As he says, there's no self-defense when the police are coming to do something like that. So probably not the right thing to do. But given his history in the military and how that affects a man, I don't see this as in any way going to detract from his potential candidacy. But as you'll see from the start of it, he's in the ACT, so he's almost certainly not going to win a seat. Next candidate, Senator Anning's candidate for the Victorian electorate of Bendigo is Julie Hoskin, a former councillor whose undischarged bankruptcy has already made her ineligible to serve in Parliament. Okay, I think this is actually a massive nothing burger. She's not in Parliament. She hasn't been elected yet. So... Who cares? Thank you to the media for doing Fraser Anning's job for him, finding out that she's ineligible. Don't forget that just last year, was it last year? No, 2017, that a number of already sitting MPs were disqualified under the same constitutional section for being dual citizens. Ironically, that is the reason Fraser Anning has a seat in the first place. So, well done. There, that's a massive nothing burger. In the Queensland seat of Oxley, where One Nation leader Pauline Hanson began her political career in 1996, Scott Morland will represent Senator Anning's party. There he is. Before his election run, Mr Morland was a senior United Patriots front figure, a leading far-right organisation in Australia. In 2016, he issued a furious response to the Australian media after anti-halal campaigner Blair Cottrell was photographed ordering a meat at a halal certified kebab store in Melbourne. And he said, I am more anti-Islam than Blair, I am more anti-halal than Blair, and I eat kebabs. Yeah, that's right. Do you know of any non-halal kebab shops? I don't, and as much as I hate the halal certification rot, Let's not get carried away. Kebabs taste effing nice, especially at 3am when you're blind, rotten, drunk. Fair enough. On his Facebook page, Mr. Morland has defended Senator Anning from white supremacist allegations. And you can see here, this was just the other day. It was quite amusing and also beyond belief watching his press conference yesterday. For the best part of five minutes, the lefty... If wit journos were into him about his supposed white supremacy links, if I was Fraser Anning, I would have simply said, could you please look to my left? And we can see we've got this Indian candidate here who is an anti-Islam campaigner. I don't personally like the fact that his number two candidate in Queensland is not a European Australian, but... Mr. Morland is indeed 100% correct when he says, how can Fraser Anning be a white supremacist, i.e. someone who wants whites to dominate over other races when he's clearly willing to work with individuals of other races. The funny thing about this section is that the media are essentially just saying, look, this is a guy who was in the UPF once, therefore this is somehow news. No, it's only news to 
far left activists in the mainstream media. No one else cares because in case you don't remember, before they were unjustifiably shut down by Facebook, potentially there were other reasons maybe from outside Facebook, just allegedly, we won't go into them. But before the UPF was shut down by Facebook, they had quite a large following. In other words, they were popular. The accusations of white supremacy were fueled by Senator Anning's widely panned maiden speech in which he called for a total shutdown of Muslim immigration to Australia, praised the white Australia policy and advocated for a final solution to the immigration problem. In quotes there. I love this section because it says the accusations were fueled by Senator Anning. In other words, they're saying Anning made us accuse him. He made us accuse him by using words that we don't like. Forgetting the fact that every solution to a problem is actually the final solution. It's just the way solutions work. Also, printing the lie that he praised the White Australia policy. He didn't actually praise the White Australia policy. Although, if he had, that's a good thing. The White Australia policy was a great policy designed to keep Australia safe and prosperous. That the people of Australia were never given the option to get rid of. The government did it without our permission, despite the fact that our country, as mentioned, was founded as a white European country. The constitution was written for that purpose. In fact, we were never given a vote, yet they put it in here as, I guess, somehow a negative thing that he may have praised it. Anyone who shares the views of Sir Robert Menzies, Australia's longest serving prime minister, is now far right and somehow the same as the neo-Nazis. Also in the news today, Fraser Anning was doing a press conference at the site of the famous 2005 Cronulla riots. And as you'll see from the headline, there was a little bit of a scuffle there. A Fraser Anning press conference descended into chaos this morning when a violent brawl broke out between a 19-year-old supporter and a photographer. Dramatic footage showed the activists clashing with snapper Dylan Robinson in Duddingham Park at Cronulla in Sydney South. Mr. Robinson was hit in the face several times, thrown to the ground and left with his shirt torn before the police arrested the young man. Now, I'm going to show the actual footage of this apparent brawl between two people. I didn't think that a brawl could actually be between only two people. I just call it a fight, maybe a scuffle when you see one of these. But let's just have a quick look at what actually happened. So you can see here the man in the shirt is the, the kid that was arrested and the photographer is the guy in black. Just a little bit of pushing and shoving. Got him a, maybe one little good one in the face there. What you'll be able to see here as we watch it again is the photographer following the kid and then the kid just lashes out. And as you heard, this witness here in the hat tells the photographer that he was coming up to threaten the kid. Now, who do you think got arrested in this altercation? That's right, it was only the kid because this is justice in Australia in the current year. As mentioned, Fraser Anning did have a press conference at Cronulla, so I thought I'd put in just a couple of the highlights. The indiscriminate immigration policy that the government has is really no policy at all. It's made, uh, pretty much open borders. Uh, more and more of these uh, attacks are coming. Uh, we're seeing attacks all over the world, but we're having the same problem here in Australia, particularly Sudanese gangs who are attacking people on a daily basis. Sorry, go ahead. Have you got a sensible question? Well, I mean, it does go to what Eliza's saying, but like, do you think it is um, potentially risky to be coming to what is quite an inflammatory place, obviously given its history, uh, when you're trying to get a, a member? Yeah, well, see, this is, this is Australia and I'm an Australian. And if I'm scared to come here, uh, what's the point of being in Australia anyway? So as you can see, he is still absolutely dominating the media. This is why they're reduced to character attacks and slurs. They can't beat him in a fair fight. That's all for this video today. Share the truth around and I'll see ya when I see ya.